welcome to the Parkview Life podcast. Our uh, purpose for this is to inform, encourage, uh, equip, and to update. Uh, and so we're excited to have a special guest with us uh, today. Uh, I'll introduce you to him in just a moment. Uh, and this is our first uh, remotely um, recorded uh, Parkview Life podcast. And so uh, anyway, we hope you found these to be helpful to your life, uh, to your relationship with the Lord, uh, to your service in his kingdom. And uh, we want to continue to do that. Just uh, by way of some updates, uh, things that you can be planning for. Uh, there are things beginning to happen in the life of our church. Certainly, we continue to pray for um, our, our world and continue to pray certainly for the membership we have that have been affected by the pandemic. Uh, we want to continue to lift them up before the Lord, ask for His hand to lead us in these days and to lead us out of these days as well. Um, and so uh, as you look at that, uh, April 14th is a big day for us. It's just after Easter um, and we are planning on bringing back a Wednesday night meal. Uh, so we're going to be asking you to, uh, to sign up for that, uh, to prepare yourself, get ready for it. Um, uh, many of you getting vaccines and stuff like that, and uh, we're, we're definitely thankful uh, for it. And look forward to the day when we can all be back together again. Um, this is just one other step along uh, that way. Uh, lots of other things happening in children's ministry, student ministry. Um, we're excited about lots of things that are going on, things that you're hearing about and things you will be hearing about and so um, let us continue to pray for the Lord's hand as we do that. Remind you about our neighborhoods and nations focus as we seek to be intentionally missional. And so we hope and pray that you'll come alongside of us for that. We're engaged right now in 40 days of prayer. Uh, and so if you not ha have not joined us in that, please, uh, please start. No time like the present. And so you can jump in today. One other thing we're challenging you with is to read through the Bible this year. Uh, and so we hope that you're engaged with us in that. Um, again, we, we want to draw near to the Lord, and as His Word makes an impact on us, uh, we're changed and transformed, uh, and uh, we want to continue to pray for the Lord's work in our lives like that. Uh, anyway, on the podcast today, uh, we're excited to have Dr. Landon Dowden. Uh, Landon is uh, the pastor at Hebron Baptist Church in Decula, Georgia, and uh, so uh, he's going to be helping us today and talking through um, one of our other core ideals uh, we looked uh, last time at being intentionally missional. Today, we look at being committed to sound doctrine. And so um, looking forward to hearing his thoughts on that. Uh, anyway, Landon, we're excited to have you on the podcast today. And um, you, uh, you've you been a friend for a long time and uh, definitely thankful for uh, for all the Lord has done in my life as a result of your friendship. And uh, so, uh, man, what are, what are your thoughts next year for the Tigers? Uh, you're an LSU guy, so... Yeah, I, I think the most important thing to say to my friends in Baton Rouge, first of all, is go Tigers and go Jesus. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> definitely an LSU guy, and I'm definitely keeping watch from afar. I've got a little LSU picture for those who can't see. It's it's behind me. I keep it here, and I've got an LSU helmet on my desk here in Georgia. I call it a light to the nations. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you know, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful for the Tigers next year. Amen. All right, man. Well, we'll look forward to seeing it. And uh we may get to interact in person some next year if uh, you know some of the pandemic lets loose. Absolutely, man. We we would love that. We we love Baton Rouge and uh, definitely love coming to see the Tigers play. Yeah, absolutely. So, Landon, as a pastor, um, you've also um, been a seminary professor, um, done lots of other things in the church. This topic of sound doctrine, as we begin to think about it, you know, we think about um, Titus chapter two, verse one. Uh, Paul, you know, speaking to Titus, telling him, "But as for you." Um, teach what accords to sound doctrine. It's also Paul's words and message to Timothy as he encourages him, if anyone teaches a different doctrine uh, that doesn't agree with sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ, he's puffed up with conceit and understands nothing. Uh, reminded of Galatians and Paul um, you know, asking the Galatians why they've so quickly abandoned the gospel that they've believed. And so uh, this whole idea of sound doctrine and sound teaching um, maybe help us understand what, what are we talking about whenever we say the words sound doctrine? I mean, what are we looking at and why is that important? Yeah, I, I think, uh, first of all, we, we have to know that sound means healthy there in the language of the New Testament, and doctrine means teaching. So by sound doctrine, what Paul is telling Timothy of, hey, give them the healthy teaching. And I think one of the key definitions of that is in First Timothy 1, because he goes on to say, you know, watch out for those that teach whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. And then he goes on to say, though, in accordance with the gospel of the glory of the blessed God with which I've been entrusted. And I think one of the key things of understanding sound doctrine is certainly there where he says in accordance with the gospel. I think one of the things that we see Paul as he writes to uh, 
13 letters there in the New Testament, he's always clarifying some aspect of the gospel. He's, he's clarifying an implication of the gospel. And so foremost, we would say that healthy, sound teaching is a clear understanding of the gospel and its implications uh, for our lives and not being swayed or pulled away from that. And then as you go on from there, he, he will talk about other things, obviously, ecclesiologically. So with the church or family, you know, here's, here's what a husband's role is. Here's what a mother's role is. But all of that springs forth from that the initial understanding of, of clearly uh, healthy teaching around the gospel. And then from there, some specific aspects with regard to how we do one another, uh, life together as one another, how we carry these out in the everyday yeah. world, right? Right. So. so as we think about Paul and, and him encouraging Timothy and Titus to those things, I mean, wh- why is it so important to articulate you know, that why, why say it, isn't it just a given, you know, isn't it just something that naturally is that, why was it so important for them uh, that they would be, I guess, engaged with sound doctrine and that kind of stuff? Well, I I think I'm teaching through Mark right now at our church and uh, in the passage that we'll handle this week, Jesus chastises the religious leaders that says, he says, you would know this if you knew the scriptures. And what he means there is because you don't know right doctrine, you don't know the answer to the question that you're trying to trap me with is what they were doing in that moment. And so we see Jesus even emphasizes in the passage before that, he says to the religious leaders who questioned his authority, he says, uh, have you not read the scripture? And then he goes on to quote from Isaiah. So uh, there was an emphasis even in the ministry of Christ. And the problem is when we do not know right doctrine, then the application or the living is going to be off trajectory from what it should have been originally. You you think about all the ways when Jesus showed up and he said, you have heard that it was said, but I say to you, Mm -hmm. again, because somewhere along the way, healthy teaching was lost, sound doctrine was lost. So then the practice was messed up. And, And I think one of the clear examples is in the Old Testament, when they recovered the book of the law and realized they had not been practicing the Feast of Booths in the way it was prescribed, one of the things that it says is when they did it in the way that it was prescribed, they were filled with joy. So when when we get away from sound teaching, it's going to impact our worship, it's going to impact our homes, it's going to impact our living, and and um, in many ways, there can be joy that we're missing out on because we have carved our own path uh, of, of trying to to say what we think is important or what should be emphasized rather than seeing God has already laid those things out and our responsibility is to see what that is and to hold to it tenaciously. Yeah. So, I mean, as we think about that, that's a beautiful example too. I think you're talking about from Nehemiah where, you know, that book of the Lord recovered and they, they practice that festival. So as we think about, you know, a, a church specifically, you know, you're a pastor, and so you've, you know, um, been, I guess, acquainted with this. In what ways would you say that, and this not necessarily maybe from a church you've served in, um, or just, you know, your observation of other churches, what ways have you seen sound doctrine and, a, I guess, a departure from it affect the church negatively? Yes. So, so I think a couple of things. Uh, if and we, we don't have the privilege, Chris, of writing our own job descriptions. They've been written for us in Colossians 1 and Ephesians 4. And in right. both of these, we are told that we are to warn everyone, teach everyone, that we may present everyone mature. In Ephesians 4, it says that we are to equip the saints for the work of ministry until they all attain to this full maturity, or there it says actually as in one man, full maturity in Christ, And it gives the reason so that they're not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And going back to Colossians, Paul will say, I'm so thankful to see how deeply rooted, built up and established you are in the faith. And you're not being pulled by these other philosophies or these other things that even fine sounding arguments, he'll say plausible arguments, that they're not being swayed. And so in our day, uh, people want to do away with doctrine for the sake of unity. But, but we, we can never forsake truth just for peace. If we forsake truth, there will never really be full peace in, in the sense uh, that the Lord intended for us to be. So doctrine has always been important because God has revealed some specific things about himself. 
We are not free to think about God or church or life or anything else in any way we want. We are bound what God has revealed about himself. When it comes to God in particular, when we think about other things, it's idolatry. We have created a God, right? And you'll hear people say, how's it plays out in the church? Well, here's who I think God is. You'll hear that in a Sunday school class or a connect group or where the God I serve is like, well, if it's based on anything other than what is sound, healthy teaching and the revelation of God himself in his own word, then it is idolatry at this point. And I will admit, it is easier to uh, follow a Jesus we've created than the one who says to us to deny self, take up cross and follow him. So the, so the problem becomes what's being handed down, what's being modeled, what is really important. All those things are lost when we lose sound teaching. Teaching uh, is what helps frame a, a safety fence, if you will, around all the other applications. And so we, we have this teaching that helps us know here are, the, here are the things that we need to live. So then, though, and, and what we would affirm, and, and you will get to, I'm sure, sound doctrine isn't an end in itself. Sound doctrine should be the, the fuel to passionate doxology, right? So, so faithful theology should always lead to worship, right? And so that's why we, we need to know Number one, are the things that we're singing about Jesus actually true of Jesus? Uh, or do we just like the melody? Do we like how the instruments are, are using? Do we, do we like what the person singing is wearing? So all these things become elevated to uh, preference begins to dominate precept at that point, right? But most importantly, man, uh, how many people are going to perish because they've never really believed the true gospel? And, and so when you move away from the healthy teaching or sound doctrine of the gospel and, and you create something other, well, then this is where people begin to be deceived. And this is where people can perish. And it's why Paul said to the church of Galatia, he said, where are you going? There is no other gospel. So these are the massive implications for why we have to make sure we recover and we hand down accurately sound teaching so that primarily someone is not confused about the life and death and resurrection of Christ, and in particular, his substitutionary atonement in our place. Yeah, so I think, you know, sound doctrine defines priority, um, you know, and what's most important um, out of, of anything, you know, that we do in the church. And then so many, I think, of the, you know, peripheral things that we worry about and we emphasize so much are taken care of when we do the the main things right you know um you know uh, you know i think you've heard the the conversation or i guess the saying you know majoring on the minors you know if we if we major on the majors it impacts and affects those minors um, yeah. and so let, let, let's use even a, an, another illustration but it relates back to the gospel so when we move away from healthy teaching or sound doctrine Let's think about in our day where you have the same gender marriage uh, issue and, and people will say, hey, it's not a big deal. Love should win. Let people be happy. It, it's not a big deal. It's not about getting people into heaven. That's Jesus. This is just while we're here, right? Uh, but the problem is that Paul says in Ephesians 5 is that our marriages are to be a picture of Christ and the church. Husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church. Wives are to submit or follow the lead of their husbands as they submit to Christ because he's the head of the church. So again, it is the sound doctrine in particular of the gospel that even frames how we relate to each other as husband and wife and the picture that God wants to show. So in each marriage, the reason why a male is needed and a female is needed is because God wants to say something about Christ and his church in each marriage. Right. And so when you move away from it, you say, hey, it's not a big deal, feelings, uh, people should be able to love who they want to love, these sorts of things. Well, we have no authority. Number one, we did not create marriage. So therefore we do not get to define how it is. God created marriage and he has a purpose, a gospel purpose for a man and a woman displaying biblical manhood and womanhood, picturing of Christ in the church. And so that's a clear picture where when sound doctrine or healthy teaching has is, is gone astray, it, it misses out in, in the way that even our home is pictured and portrayed and why it matters. Yeah. 
So with so much out there, I mean, you know, we can, you know, I mean, this podcast would be an example. Um, you know, there's so much media we have access to, so many uh, different avenues uh, for uh, listening to a sermon, for having a, a, a Bible lesson, you know, getting a devotion, all of those kind of things. What would be some practical ways that you would give to uh, someone uh, who, who may not be, you know, deeply versed in theology and, and those kinds of things, you know, practical ways for them uh, to, to measure if what they're believing is sound doctrine, what they're listening to would accord with sound doctrine? Uh, maybe just help us kind of think through that for a little bit. Yeah. So I think a, a couple of things. First of all, <laughs> is there a biblical text? We mm -hmm. should always start there. So if yeah. you're listening to something and, and there's not a biblical text and this person is just ex expressing their thoughts, while I'm sure the 44 years of my accumulated wisdom might be so impressive, uh, I do not have the words of life. So mm -hmm. God alone has the words of life and the ancient of days has the wisdom that we need. So if you're listening to someone and then there's not even a text, uh, it's going to be difficult to have healthy teaching, sound doctrine, when you're missing this doctrine and the teaching that they were committed to. They were committed to the apostles' teaching. Well, that was the sound teaching. That was the doctrine, right? Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a text. Second of all, you need a text that is rightly handled. And that means that text is not ripped from its context to say just whatever the speaker was interested in communicating that day. That text actually needs to be handled in its right context. The Holy Spirit breathed that text out in that moment in conjunction with the verses that are before it and the verses that are after it. So what you want to do is to make sure that you're listening to those who seek to rightly divide the word, who are dealing with the original context, though there are some contemporary applications that will come from our life. So if you're sitting under someone and and they just take a verse. Uh, I did a whole series called "Out of uh, Straight Out of Context because I took some of the most popular verses. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, is not a promise for every athlete who's ever entered the arena of their yeah. sport, right? right. right. Uh, if my people uh, humble themselves and pray and seek my advice, I'll hear them and heal their nation. That is actually not a promise to America. It was the promise uh, to God's people, to Israel in a particular moment. But when we take verses and, and take them out of context, then we can tr make the, uh, we can use them to say they mean something. It doesn't mean they mean something, right? Sure. So you need someone who's given you a text. You need someone who is handling the text rightly and who's equipping you to do the same. And then one of the key other things I, I would say in there is, is the hope of the gospel presented as you walk through? Because God speaks in every genre from his word, and in every genre, he speaks of Christ. Mm -hmm. So in what way is this message calling me to be better, do better, or is this message pointing me to Christ and what he's accomplished? Is this text adding a heavy burden to me, or is this text showing me how Christ has already satisfied the burden, and on top of that, grants mercies for me to walk in? So for instance, i I listened to another pastor who before the service even told me, said, man, I got a word for the people. And it was this word from uh, 1 Samuel, and it was on parenting, but it was never connected to the power of the gospel. It just merely laid a heavy burden uh, of guilt to say, you should be better parents. Well, who doesn't know that? We all know that, right? Right, right? But in what way does the gospel empower me? And what means through Christ to have access to the mercies and grace that I need in order to be the father or the mother that I need to be, the husband or the wife. So you need to make sure that as you're listening, sound doctrine, again, is going to accord with the gospel in some form of how Christ is the answer. Christ helps supply the need that you carry these things out. For instance, the first three chapters of, of Ephesians, here is the gospel, 4, 5, and 6. Now, therefore, in the power of the gospel, here's what you can do. Right. Romans 1 through 11. Here's the gospel, Romans 12 through 16. Now, in the power of the gospel is what you do. So make sure you're listening to someone who has a text. They're rightly handling that text. And in handling that text, it is tied to the power of the gospel that Christ has given and that he has the uh, he's provided the means for us to be able to walk in whatever it is that we're being called to walk in. Those are three quick ones, I would say, although I don't think that was really quick. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's good, man. I think that's great stuff. You know, so so helpful and practical, I think, to look through it through that lens. Because I think sometimes when we get outside of a church service, we we somewhat abandon those things and, you know, take that kind of hat off. 
You know, in other words, when we're listening to the pastor on Sunday, okay, yeah, I want to make sure all those things are happening. But I think sometimes the temptation can be, well, if it's a podcast somewhere, then I can take that hat off. Um, so I think it's so important to uh, to use that criteria in in what we see and what we do. Um, so kind of kind of as we as we wrap up, I think maybe a final question, you know, to ask you. Let's say somebody has been listening to this podcast. And what's been kind of, I guess, determined in their heart as the Holy Spirit has led them is that uh, they have believed what would accord to false doctrine. Um, what, what should they do? Um, what, where, where should they go from, from here and from this point? Yes. So, so two things I, I would want to say quickly. Num- number one, uh, you know, some of us are, are brought up. Uh, I, I was actually asked this question in our men's group this past Sunday of, what do we do with folks who've kind of grown up in places where sort of half truths or discipleship has been lacking? And and the confidence that that we all have is uh, these people don't need us to show up with the gospel and say, "Hey, you've been wrong all these years." The beauty is the Holy Spirit can really do His own job yeah. if if those people are reading in their text. The one who leads us into all truth is the Holy Spirit. He is the one who can confirm, and and so. That's the hope that I have for these. Certainly, uh, those of us who have been entrusted with sound doctrine do need to go forward with it in every way that we can. Mm-hmm. But in, in some of these cases, look, you you can't help what your family brought you up in or what you were exposed to. What you can do from there is start where you are. And it may begin by starting to say, hey, God, I'm sorry. Here are the ways I, I was taught to think about you. I now see uh, these other things are true of you. And first of all, that's just a grace and a mercy. So you want to praise him for that grace and mercy. And then the second thing that just I just want to say is, yeah, you no one is calling you to be a seminary professor and to be the uh, the the procurer of all doctrine. Key key things that I ask our church here every year: Do we look more like Jesus this year than we did last year? This is how we can know that doctrine is going somewhere besides just our head. And then the second question is, do we love Jesus more this year than we did last year? That's the thing that doctrine fuels, right knowledge of him. When we know him rightly, we will love him passionately. You can't help it. You see his greatness and his goodness. And so do we look like him more because we are learning more about him and we're walking with him? And do we love him more as a, as a light of this? This is how doctrine leads to that faithfulness. And so you just start where you are. And it, it's not about, again, uh, winning arguments. None of this is about debates. This is about devotion and delight. That's what this is about. Uh, when Jesus shows up to, to deal with the church of, of Ephesus and his letter there to the churches in, in Revelation, he says, man, you guys have great doctrine and you have outstanding deeds, but where is your devotion? Where is your love? So we don't come at this because we want to win Bible trivia on Saturday night with our family, or we're trying to convince a neighbor. Above all, we come so that we can delight in in God and his greatness. And and the height of that is the gospel, which is the foundation of all sound teaching. And when we see that, man, we're not doing any of this because we're commanded. We're doing it because we're compelled. We can't help but, but follow along and want to know him more, and want others to know him rightly. And that's a great place to leave it. I think nothing better could be said on that particular topic. So, man, it's been great. I've been encouraged uh, from this time together. Um, It's always uh, a learning uh, opportunity for me when I get to hang out with you. And I'm thankful that our congregation uh, and others will be able to benefit from that just through this uh, brief time that we've had together. And so um, this has been the Parkview Life podcast. Thanks to Landon Dowden, who is our guest today. And um, as you think about being committed to sound doctrine, uh, how might you uh, be more faithful to the Lord as you draw deeper to Him through His Word? Hope you'll join us again for our next episode of the Parkview Life Podcast. Uh, Until then, God bless you.